And so number seven, the last question then from the 2011 Higher Paper to Circles. Easy really though, there's nothing to be scared of with circles. With circles, the first thing you have to do is be able to extract the geometrical information about the circle. Where's its centre? What's its radius? Then you can draw a diagram and see the relationships that's involved. Once you've got a picture of it, then it's just down to counting boxes to work out distances. Well, here you've got two circles. One circle is meant to be inside the other circle, but it's not allowed to touch the other circle. And you have to find something to do with the possible values of P for that to happen. But before you even do that, the first thing you would do is get the geometrical information. What's the centre? What's the radius? Now in this form, which is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, where a and b are the centres of the circle, the coordinates of the centres, and r's the radius. Just like you have for any of the transformed equations. Same with a line. y minus b equals mx minus a, where ab gives the coordinates of a point that the line passes through. Same with a circle. ab gives the centre of the circle displaced from the origin. So that in this case then, you can see straight away that the centre of that circle is going to be whatever is being subtracted. So that must be negative 1, positive 1 for the centre. And the radius will be the square root of 1, 2, 1. So the square root, I'll just call that 1 and write it a bit neater, is 11. There you go. Then, Expanding that, so multiplying out the square of that bracket, you would have the square of the first, twice the product, 2 times ax, negative, plus a squared, squaring that bracket, y squared, minus 2by, plus b squared, and if you bring that out over at the same time, minus r squared equals 0, which putting it into the order of squares first, then the variables, and then that lot being lumped together, where's it going? Puts it into this form here. Well, quite clearly, all that's happened to the original centre is instead of it being minus a, it's minus twice it. So that will just be double what it was, whether or not you call it a or change it to f and g simply for the, to have the facility of having that a positive, and then the counterbalance of having to say the negative of it for the centre anyway. So, for the circle, the centre is going to be. That's been doubled, so it'll be two opposite signs, same as that. Only difference is, here it's been doubled. And that would have been a y plus, so it's going to be minus 3. Radius, though, was a bit jumbled up. I oh, rubbed it away. That's made up from the centre squared minus the number at the end. Whether you call it a squared and b squared, or whether you call it f squared and g squared, or negative, whatever, it's the centre squared. So it'll be the 2 squared and the negative 3 squared minus the number at the end, and that will tidy up to, I'll call this the second radius, that's going to be 4, and 9 is 13, so it's the square root of 13 minus p. So there's an unknown there then. So that's the first part then. From the two equations, in whichever form they're in, get the centre, get the radius. Centre, get the radius, that's the geometric information, and then you can draw a sketch of it and see exactly what's happening. Now it did say this circle is meant to sit inside of that circle, so I'll draw that circle first. So for the first circle, there's its centre at, and I'll put it up here, negative 1, 1. Now this and its radius is 11. Now the second circle sits inside of that. Now its centre is at 2, so from negative 1, 2 means it's further on. In fact, negative 1 to 2 means it's 3 further on. And 1, and this is at negative 3, means it's 4 down. Well, straight away I know the distance between them is 5, because I've gone 3, 4, they're right angles to each other. Put note of that outside, 2, negative 3. Then what happens is, that circle is fixed to have its centre there, but I don't know what its radius is, and it says, what's the biggest, what's the range of values, rather, of the radius, so that it can sit inside this circle and not touch the outer one. Well, that'd just be like having this pond, and you pop a stone in there, and then the circles radiate out a bit like this. So that the smallest circle 
would have to be bigger than a dot, obviously. The radius has got to be greater than zero. And the biggest circle, that'd be the maximum distance. It'd have to be just less than that distance there. So the radius of the big circle was 11, meaning this distance must be 11 altogether. Just put a note of that to the side there, 11. That's the centre of the small circle, that's the centre of the large circle. So that's C1 and that's C2. So working out the distance between C1 and C2 will tell you what's left over for the biggest possible radius of the inner circle. I already know that that's going to be 5 because it was 3, 4, but I'll just set it out formally. So what's that distance? What's the distance from C1 to C2? Well, that's just a case of Pythagoras. Get, if you want, the distance between two points. You just need to find out what's the distance along the way, the difference in the x's, what's the distance up the way, and then use Pythagoras with those two. So it'll be the same here. If I want the distance from C1 to C2, I just think, well, what's the difference between the x's? That'll give them a horizontal component. What's the difference in the y-coordinates? That'll give them a vertical component. Then I'll just do Pythagoras in that. So the difference in the x's, I've got 2, take away negative 1. 2, take away negative 1, square that. Difference in the y's, I've got negative 3, take away 1. Negative 3, take away 1, square that. So that's going to be 3 squared and negative 4 squared. And you know immediately from that it's going to be 5 because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. But I'll just finish it off. So that's going to come to 9 plus 16 is 25. So C1, C2 is going to be the square root of 25, which means that C1, C2 is 5. Now that's an awful lot of writing for nothing. I could just have said at this point here, equals 5, and then give the reason because I've got a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And that would have done Anyway, so that means this part of it's 5, so obviously if that's 11 and that's 5, the maximum size of the radius is 6. I'll just put down the justification of that. R1 minus C1, C2 is 11 minus 5, which equals 6. And thereafter it's just a case of, so what the range of values of these circles well, the smallest circle would have to be bigger than a dot, or it wouldn't be a circle. So in other words, the radius has got to be greater than zero. The biggest circle, if it were to touch the outside, it would have radius six, so it's got to have a radius just less than six. Now that's what you have to solve. Now this first part was trivial. Get the centre, get the radius, get the centre, get the radius. Draw a little sketch, realise the biggest answer could be six, and then you're just left with this in equation now. So take this in equation in two separate parts. Take this bit first. I'll just still leave it this way around. I'll put it over here. If 0 has to be less than r, but if r is to be greater than 0, of course I should have said that was r2, well that means that 0 has to be less than the square root of 13 minus p. Now generally you've got to be careful when you're dealing with inequations and you start multiplying both sides of an inequation. But since what I'm going to do next is get rid of that square root by squaring, that keeps everything positive, which will maintain that inequality. So square both sides to get rid of the square root. Well, the square root is 0, 0. The square this side, of course, removes the square root and liberates the terms inside. Then I'll bring that over to this side. Negative p is a positive p. So p has to be less than 13. So there's one part of the story. The other half of it is this. R2 has to be less than 6. The square root of 13 minus p has to be less than 6. Square both sides. 13 minus p has to be less than 36. Now I could take this over and read it back. I'll just leave it the way it is just now. So negative p has to be less than, take the 13 across and subtract it, which is 23. And then I'll just reverse all my signs, multiply by negative 1, if you will, P is greater than negative 23. Those would be the range of values, or you could state it in a single statement and say this. P has to be less than 13, but greater than negative 23. And really, that's all there is to it. There wasn't anything to be scared of with circles.